it's within that, in that individual choice with ourselves, that's where we create the collective. Hey, it's Ryan Holiday. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Stoic Podcast. I'm recording this not from my house, but from Florida. Man, I thought people in Texas were a little crazy about the pandemic. In Florida, apparently it doesn't exist. Everyone has uh, moved on to, to bigger and better things, which is not great. Remember, just because you are done with COVID doesn't mean COVID is done with us. But I am really excited about today's guest, someone who I haven't met in person, but we got connected several months ago, I've sort of gone back and forth, texted. Even though we live in the same town, we haven't been able to see each other again because of the pandemic. But my guest is none other than Matthew McConaughey, author of the new book, Green Lights. My blurb for it is, it shouldn't surprise you that this book is good, but it will surprise you just how good it is. That's me, pretty cool. I don't know if I ever thought I'd be on the back of a Matthew McConaughey memoir, but here we are. Matthew is awesome, and as it happens, a fan of the Stoics, so it was great to connect with him. We have a really in-depth conversation about the power of Stoicism, the importance of autonomy in your life, in your career, you know, sort of making your own destiny. But then this idea of green lights, to me, it's, it's obviously a sort of singular Matthew concept, but it is deeply stoic. You know, Epictetus says, don't wish for your life to be otherwise, wish for it to be as it is and you will be happy. I think that's what a green light is. It's about taking yes for an answer when life throws one at you. I'm honored to talk to Matthew to talk about the new book. Thanks to Michael Rapineau, our mutual friend who connected us. He shot me an email and he said, uh, Michael's the CEO of Live Nation. And he said, hey, I have this friend, he's doing a book. Do you guys wanna connect? He's a fan of yours. He said, sure, but you know, you never know what these things are gonna be. It could be a cousin of a cousin who's self-publishing a book and his friend MM that he was talking about in the email happened to be the one and only Matthew McConaughey, whose work I love. Obviously the first season of True Detective is incredible. Dallas Buyers Club, Wolf of Wall Street, Dazed and Confused. One of the great actors of our time, certainly also the Minister of Culture at UT. I saw him two seasons ago lead 110,000 people in a chant at the beginning of the game. It was incredible. He's uh, one of the founders and owners of the Austin Football Club. So he's an entrepreneur, a businessman, an artist, now a writer, soon to be a number one bestseller, I'm sure. Uh, this is a great interview. Can't wait for you to hear it. We'll talk soon. And again, remember, just because you're done with the pandemic doesn't mean it's done with you. Be safe, be smart, stay home, read a book, talk soon. So I, I thought we'd start this. I've always wanted to ask this question to an actor. There's this great line from Epictetus. He says, you know, life is like being an actor. He says, you don't get to choose your lines. You just choose how you deliver them. He's, he's basically mm. saying that sort of life is written that, you know, that there's a, a higher power who's mostly in control. And then we have this sort of circumscribed role where we do the best we can. It's always struck me as, as a weird profession, your, your line of work, in that you have so little actual control of what you do. You get to choose your movies at, at this point in your career, but you don't control what the other actors do. You don't control what no. the director does. You don't no. control the marketing budget. No. I mean, it's a, so, so like the, 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 the bar still whiskey version of that is, hey, you play the hand you're dealt. Yeah. Right? So... Yeah, I mean, it's part of the reason that I did write a book. And I'm going to go back into the, the acting. So there's four filters from my first raw expression as an actor. There's what I do. or One, I'm doing someone else's script. It's being directed by someone else. It's being lensed in the camera by someone else and edited by someone else before it's presented in the sure. final form, which you see in the theater on TV. You know, it's a little bit of what I do in my class at UT with the script to screen. It's the, the, the original script is so different from the final product. Um, things change, you know, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Sometimes it's just completely different. My job as an actor, and I, and I only learned this in the last 15 years from the great Penny Allen, my mentor, um, who really taught me what acting was. She's like, you have to own your man, your character. You have to be the sole owner of that. You have to know your man upside down, backwards, forwards, better than anybody else. It's not the directors anymore. It's not the writers who wrote it anymore. You're the bloodline. You're the expression. The baton has been handled. Now, to do that, that takes a lot of the work of my version is I want to come in with four versions of the truth in every scene. So, like you said, when every actor goes off script or changes something up or the director completely wants to surprise you, I'm calling audibles, I'm ready. And I'm not having to think about it, it's instinctually coming out of me. Now, if I can do that, 
like I've always said this, my ideal place when I really get to know my man as an actor is put a blindfold on me. Take me. I don't care if you take me to Mars, wherever. Be rolling camera, be video, press record as soon as I walk off and take the take the uh, blindfold off. And I should be able to behave as my man would in any situation. I don't always get there, but uh, that's the place. And again, I got to have the dialogue to have the monologue. But every character, every actor should know the monologue of his man or his woman. So was that frustrating early on your in your career? Because you seem like a, a sort of an ambitious guy, a, a guy who has a lot of artistic expression that you want to get out. Was it hard for you to sort of see your role as like, especially I guess in movies that maybe you didn't like as much? How do you how do you sort of go in and go? I can only focus on what I do here. I think one of the nice parts about being a writer, as I'm sure you found, is you do have so much more control over the artistic yeah. expression. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a solo sport. It's golf versus yeah. football. Yeah. Well, even though acting, you know, acting, I've learned to understand that, yes, while it's a football, while it's a team sport, I get pretty selfish on that. I'm like, I mean, I, I, I'm a team player. I love collaboration. I've learned that there's more than, uh, that the, though I may not be wrong, there's more than one way to be right. Or a better word for acting is to be true, to go out and just tell the truth, not about right or wrong. I, I try to get a measure from a director early on, on what is our measure of excellence? All right, I did this with Gary Ross from Free State of Jones. We're two weeks into shooting and we're communicating pretty well and he's giving me direction and I'm feeling pretty good about it and what he's got to say. And I feel like his meter of excellence is similar to mine. I'm enjoying his direction and I'm giving stuff back to him and he seems to be receiving it, but I want to check it. I want to check our relationship. So we do this one, we do the scene one day and I do uh, 10 takes. So after the 10 takes, I said, Gary, come here. We go in, we go into the, the, the tent and look at the monitor. I said, I'm going to write down what I think is the select best takes. You write down what you think are the best select takes out of the 10. And then we're going to swap papers to see if we're seeing things the same. So I write down first half of take four, second half of take two. We watch all 10 takes. We swap papers. I open this paper. It says first half of take four, second half of take two. Now, when that happens... Now I'm like, here we go. Freedom. You and I are seeing things the same. Doesn't mean we agree on everything, but we have the same measure of excellence. Like you see that, that, that take five, which was really good, but I kind of, I was acting. You see me there, there was a good moment. And I anticipated it and I tried to put a little cherry on top. It wasn't as true as it was when I did it in take four for the first time. Yes, it's exactly what I saw. Da, 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 da. You know, so when we meet there on a measure of what we deem excellent or deem the most true, then the relationship becomes much more collaborative for me. Meaning if you're the director and you're telling me what to do, I don't have any sort of defense up. Now I've had many of films I've done where the director and I are not seeing eye to eye on my character, what the truth is for my character. And boy, they open their mouth and I'm going, hmm, <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, 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 yep. And the other thing is, is to go out there, I'll, I'll this has been said long before I'm saying it now, but in Hollywood, they say, if the director ever says, well, give me one take my way, just for me. If you do it, that takes what's going to, they're going to put that take in the movie. <laughs> no matter how, no matter if you did it that that well or not, most sure. of the time they're going to put that in the movie. So you know, I feel like that's a good question. I, I find myself asking people that question a lot when I work on books for people. It's sort of like, what does success actually look like here? Because I find like, so so obviously it's one problem when people aren't aligned, but I find maybe a more common issue is actually nobody has even thought about what success looks like and they're just sort of winging it. You know what I mean? You seem like a guy right. who goes in with a strong sense of what you want. Absolutely. So at least you know. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I am not really one for, for jumping off and saying, well, let's 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 wait ah, let's, let's do. now i have succeeded though when that has happened actually and sometimes i have to remind myself now to be more open to saying just let it go just whatever but i do i am a fan of writing the headline before writing the story yeah. i am a fan of before doing a movie sitting down before we've shot one scene with the producers and the director and going what's the poster just where where, where are we heading what kind of what's the movie look like i mean if the poster's a, a close-up silhouette of my face that means, oh, the, the director's really going to follow this like a real lead character drama. It's going to be a, a real character piece. If the poster's a big, broad landscape with a sun setting in the background and a lightning bolt and some, some shadows, some silhouettes in the background, oh, okay, that's more of a 
backward epic, it's going to be more about story than character. You know what I mean? So I'm getting in my mind, what is that place we're going? And that poster will change. Just like my own headline will change, but it gives me, I, I, I'd I love to have that bit of a goal line just to understand where we're going. It's what I say in the book about like, look, just give me the, this just conservative or liberal lake. Let's define our direction. We go north, south, east, to west. Right. If we just pick that, now give yourself 16 lanes to swerve and you can take the feeder road off all you want because you're, you're going the general direction. <laughs> you're either heading towards Florida, California, Montana, or Mexico. Which way are we going? Well, I was, that's what I was going to ask about the book. You know, if this idea of a green light, if you don't act like there's this quote from Seneca, which I love, he says, if you don't know which port you're sailing to, no wind is favorable. So this idea of hitting the green lights, obviously you want to hit the green lights, but if you're going in the wrong direction, actually hitting the green lights is the worst possible yep. gift you could get. So having a clear sense of what you want is essential. Intentional and, 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 and deliberate choice to go that way. And then I know for me, if I have, if we have that, then it's easy to dance and blow in the wind, you know, create your weather, then blow in the wind. But I'm not for just saying, yeah, whatever, we're heading out. Well, wait a minute. I want to check the forecast. Uh, Where I am right now may be 82 degrees, but where we're going is going to be negative 12. Yeah. If I head out without checking, I'm going to be cold where I'm going. So let's just check out some general things and say, what can we, should we be prepared for? What are the general rules of engagement that I'm heading into? And then be free to dance and go, yeah, I'm ready to do backflips with my eyes closed. No. And that was one of the the things I was really interested in in the book is your sort of deliberate decision to change the trajectory or the arc of your career. So yeah, on the one hand, an actor doesn't have a ton of control over what happens in the movie, but you do have some control over what movies you choose to be in or not. Sure. And so, yeah, your your decision to say like, hey, I'm going to be a different kind of actor then allowed you to say yes and no to certain movies that probably seem totally crazy to other people, to your peers, to your yeah. management team, but you knew where you wanted to go. So actually being offered, you know, X amount for this movie, no amount of money made it the right decision. No, because I had hit a red light with my soul and myself. I had hit a red light where it wasn't about how much money that was giving me. It was about, wow, these I'm going to work. It's easy. It's fun. Nothing wrong with that. Let's not be, you know, okay. I remember telling myself, hey, nothing wrong with that. Let's not just, again, let's not trip ourselves running downhill here. I said, but man, I, I think there's a way and I, w- I want to find a way where my work is challenging me, where I'm having an experience in the work, where I'm growing in the work, where it's challenging the vitality I have in my life, which was feeling very vital and has been feeling very vital. So that was a red light for me, is that when I would go to work, I'd feel like, well, I didn't feel as much in, in life as I do in real life. And it felt like, oh, okay, I'm going off to work. This is too easy. And it's supposed to be easy, but mm, is that really what I want? So I had a red light in my life. I was not growing through my work at that time. And so that's why I stopped doing what I was doing and did turn down. And it wouldn't have mattered. You know, people go like, well, look, you know, that big offer you got for 14, whatever. If that had been 20, would you have done it? I was like, no, I mean, I really wasn't. I would have probably reread it again just to say, I think I should. That would be the responsible thing just yeah. to consider it. Um, but I was never. that. that che- my check was, I had already cash that check with my soul saying, I'm not going back. It's a champagne problem, certainly, but it's not easy to do, right? To say no to, uh, when people, when it's hard to say no to socially acceptable things. Yes. And socially acceptable when they are <laughs> the best champagne in the world. Yeah. I mean, as far as the, the, the taste, it's a very shiny gold things were in front of me and they weren't the devil. Right. They weren't they weren't evil. They weren't tyrannical. They were ty- I felt they would be tyrannical to me in doing them and to spend my time there. And so, yeah, it was it, it was difficult and it is difficult to say no sometimes. But, you know, this you, know, you talk about it all the time. There there was that was the great power the, in, in the no. I mean, I had look, could I have made that decision 10 years prior? No, obviously. And I didn't make that decision. Right. 10 years prior. Remember, I come in, you come into something. And this goes along with the line I bring up about being less impressed and more involved. Look, I'm still impressed with this industry and impressed that, wow, I get to do this? 
I would do it for free. There's not right. one sure. film that I've done that I would not do for free because I love the work. But you can't roll through going, I'm still just so happy to be here. <laughs> You're offering me that work. Of course, you have to be discerning. There's only 24 hours in a day and we've got to schedule through a year. You can't do everything you want to do if you're, if you're in a fortunate position, which I am. So I had to make choices. And life is um, short. It's so short, <laughs> you know, even though it, it, it does seem to last a while sometimes, overall, it's very short. So, you know, yeah, to say no to those things was hard. But I had a hunch. I had a hunch that there was a that there was a, a joker in the deck at at the end of the line somewhere. I didn't know when the end of the line was was going to come, but it but it did t about two years later. I'm glad you brought up Free State of Jones because that's actually maybe my favorite movie of yours. And I I told Bob Simmons of STX, who I've gotten to know over the years, that I, that I love that movie, and I think he joked, "Oh, you're the only one. Uh, you're the person that's seen it." <laughs> um, so that's probably part of it too, which is I don't know about you, but I feel like some of the stuff that I'm most proud of is the stuff that the least amount of people have seen. Right. Sometimes, sometimes I know it. You know, and, 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 I, and I've learned this, hang on, because sometimes they resurrect themselves down yes. the line somewhere where they get found. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've been through times in my life where the work I'm doing that I dislike the most or don't love the most is maybe loved, is maybe accepted the most, but maybe by people that I'm like, eh, but that's not really the people that I, that I appreciate right. and respect the most. But I have found this. Well, I think I'm trying to think of what is what has done it. I've had a couple that disappeared. Never, never got their head above water. Films that are like, ah, it just came and went. No one even knows it came and went. And then five, ten years later, all of a sudden it has a little resurrection. Hey, man, I was watching last night and this came on. That's a great movie. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And right. it'll happen. So sometimes patiently it comes. And then I always like to think of it like, like you know, try to have a career. This is a lofty thought, but like a di like Dylan, you know, he just pounded out albums, man, and things, and 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 you know, Willie Nelson, they just they just they just pound out albums and keep hammering you with them. And certain ones rise later on. If you look back at the at the you know the history of of career, like a Dylan, like that, you go. Man, he was expressing who he was along the way and wasn't really worried about the result. And there are some absolute gems here. No, it's like quantity is actually a way to get to quality. Maybe they're not always at odds with each other the way people think that they are. Maybe. And the other, well, the other thing is, I would say that artists, like if you're saying quantity is just have quantity if you want to put, if, you, if that's what, if that's what it ends up being. Sure. Meaning if you're going like, I... I have to keep creating here. I have to keep creating. I just finished one. I got to go to work again. I got to do it again. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in a gold, golden age of creativity with myself. I need to just keep putting out content. Good. Do so uh, because you're doing it for you and sure. you're not doing it for the result of, well, wait a minute. Now, mind you, I that sabbatical I took, I did sacrifice quantity at that time. Sure. But I was not allowed. I knew that I was not being allowed at the time to play in the sandboxes that I wanted to play in. Right. And I wanted to play in different sandboxes. So I said, you can keep nailing quantity in the sandboxes you've been in, this romantic comedy sandbox, which is the only one they're letting you play in. But it was felt, it started to feel revolutionary. It started to feel very circular. Like they're all sort of the same. Boy meets girl, they break up. Boy chase girl, catches her at the end, roll the credits, we get happy. You know, I mean, sure. that, that's it. They're all the same and this, that's fine. But I was looking for, I was looking for Roles that I go, geez, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This scares me. I'm sweating in my boots, man. This, oh, that is what I was looking for, a buzz. I was looking for the buzz. Well, that's what I was going to ask you about Newton Knight. It's such a such a fascinating character. It must have been weird, too, as a, as a, as a born and raised Southerner to play this sort of guy that is neither North nor South, right? Yeah. And I... I it strikes me as we need more people. I, I, when we first met, I said this to you, but it was like, I feel like we need more people like that these days. People who make make decisions for themselves, not decisions based on identity or affiliation yeah. or, you know, the idea of breaking away from the South in the South is just an incredible, yeah. incredible idea. amount of moral yeah. and physical courage. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, and I'm I'm with you, and you and I've spoken a little bit about this offline. The right now, to the 2020, right now, the individual has more the 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 private sector, 
all the way down to the individual has more power than ever and should take advantage of that power. I don't know how to make systemic change, but we can each look in the mirror and make the choice and go, I am an individual. And it's, it's within that, that really, look, I found this with the book. The more personal I got with the book, the more relatable it was to more people. Sure. The more I dove into the I, the more it was relatable to the we. Well, it's in that individual choice with ourselves, not, not parried to any party or anything else. That's where we create the collective. Right. And people, people say that is, I think, a contradiction. And I do often sometimes myself, but that's what I know I'm trying to chase. Go, no, the actual, the best decision for the I is actually the best decision for the we. The most selfless decision is the most selfless decision and vice versa. The best decision for the we is the most for the I. But but before you try to, it's a little that act, act locally, then, yes. then, then globally. It's look at self first and that will open yourself up to what is how we become a collective, how you're acting, what the best decision is for the we, what is the most selfless decision. But they're, they're, they're much more a paradox than a contradiction, I think, that most of us make them sometimes. But that goes to your definition of acting earlier. You defined acting as sort of the decision to be true. I think what, what you see in a character like that or what you see in these sort of people, whether it's a Martin Luther or a Martin Luther King, the sort of here I stand, I can do no other. I am right. incapable of not being right. true to myself in this moment, come what will. Well, and there, and there you go. So, so, and this happens when going back to, to roles that I'll play in acting or who we are in life, like people you brought up. I'll write pages and, and, and go through major amounts of intellectual uh, uh, um, rigor to find my man, so to speak. But you know, when I, here's, when I, here's when I really have it. And here's when I really have myself in life. When you go, yeah, but why? But ba 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 ba. And my answer is very simple, because that's who I am. There's nothing more. There's no no adjectives, no adverbs, because yeah, because that's who I am. But it's and and then that's the hardest thing I think for people to do because, as you said, that feels very selfish. The the famous sort of stoic resistance character is is Cato. Although there was there's a few other Stoics after they're sort of known as the Stoic opposition. There sort of came this the emperor would sort of go like, why can't you just be normal? You know, like, why can't you just go along with everybody else? Why? Why is this so important to you? You're like the only one that's not going along. And then and then, as you said, you sort of boil it down and you boil it down and you go because that's who I am and I don't have a choice. Everyone else might have a choice, but I don't have a choice. Yeah. And if we can get there, beautiful. And I say, you know, I'm all everybody. If you if you're not a tyrant in those choices, <laughs> you know what I mean, then it, set sail. I mean, I think I think that actually family structure and societies are sort of built like that anyway. That you you create a formation. This is what's expected of you. Everyone toe the line. And there's a lot of great things to that. They yeah. keep order. They keep gave us form structure. Let us know and and. But certain individuals, uh, at certain times, when you break out of it and go your own way, and the and the and the the the, the powers that be, the, the 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 father or society goes, no, you can't do that. But if you are not asking permission, and you fully own it, all of a sudden you do it. Steve Jobs, whatever, it, society and the family goes, there you go. <laughs> they applaud it. Sure. If but but the thing is, it's that thing you know. You go when I went to 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 my father to say I wanted to go to law school, film school instead of law school. He heard in my voice that I meant it. If I'd have been like, well, I think I want to, he'd have probably popped off and got mad because he'd been challenging me. No, no, no. You're not coming at me. Don't come at me with it with with, with a request until you've committed to it and sure. and, and and are gonna do it with or without my approval. <laughs> and that when I did that, he was like, yes. Don't half ass it. That's my boy. And I noticed it. He appreciated that he, his son being a rebel and going his own way by hook or by crook. Uh, in, in one conversation, within 10 seconds on a phone, my dad heard it. And we made a full transition in our relationship. And I was launched out. And I, he, he saw me becoming a man by my own choices. I like your point about you have to be sort of a tyrant or, or an asshole about it. There's an F. Scott Fitzgerald story called The Four Fists. And it's about this sort of very principled guy. But at some point, he's at one of the sort of pivotal moments in the story, if I'm remembering this correctly. He, he sort of, he's in this business deal. And if he does the right thing, he's almost certainly going to be fired and lose his job. And then his mm. family and his children will suffer. And he's sort of wrestling with the, oh, 
to do a, the right thing here is actually a selfish thing. And so he's good. I, th that must have been hard, too, as you think. And obviously, again, champagne problems. But as you're thinking about you're like, hey, I could do this and my family will be set for life. Uh, but yeah. I'm tired of being in romantic comedies. You know what I mean? Like it, there, there's a part of you that probably yeah. wants to go, but I'll just I'll just gut this out. I'll just do it anyway, even though I don't want to, because it's the responsible thing. Well, it's a responsible thing. It's an expected thing. And trust me, my, my, my family, my blood family, my brothers and, and mother and brother were, were like, what the f is your problem? What are you right. doing, man? You're getting, you're, 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 you're mentally meditating, Matthew, little brother. You're like all locked up. You're overthinking this. You're, you're, you're paralysis of analysis, you know? And I, yeah. but, and I was like, no. And I had that discussion where I was able to say to them, guys, it's not, I'm not, I, I, this is not open for debate. Right. I'm not, I'm not coming to you going, what do you think? The ship has sailed. I'm doing, and as soon as they had said that, they're like, there you go, little brother. All right, good luck. I don't get it, but you, he does. All right. And then it was, I was in, then there was no, they, 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 they had my back from then on, but they still didn't understand it, but they knew that, oh, this was not open for discussion with me, with the choice I'd made. Yeah, I guess that's where this idea of courage comes in. But I was thinking too about, you know, the idea of green lights. It's almost like, uh, you decide what you want, and then it's often the people who you care about most who throw up the red lights because they're wor like they're worried about right, it. Right, right. This is interesting. Yeah, um, you know, and and to go back a second to your 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 comment before, which is about these green lights. It's and I haven't really talked about this in in the book, but it's it's a further conversation from it is which green lights, some green lights are plugged into a two volt battery. Yeah. They sure. shine bright for the moment, but they're not gonna last. Some green lights are solar powered. They're eternal. They're gonna shine after we're gone. Now, if we can get plugged into those and make those kind of green lights non-negotiable and be able to see, oh, this is a green light right now, but it's a stop, not a stay. Oh. You, the ones the ones that are plugged to batteries will turn red quickly is what I'm saying. Yeah, you, sure. you will get the red and yellow because you should get the red and the yellow <laughs> either by someone else that's around you and cares for you or with your own self going like, well, this is a stop, not a stay. This is this is just a little vacation. This isn't a true green light. I'm giving myself this hedonistic experience right now and, and realizing it's a green light. But this is not going to last. You know, and I've had many times of that in my life where I was like, OK, I'm going to ride this green light right now and I'm going to press gas and I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy. It. I'm going to give myself the license and, 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 I, and I'm not going to slow. You are usually I would slow down tomorrow. I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to give myself an entire month, you know, and that's OK as long as I when I re, it, it's only OK when I realized it early, though, because sometimes we can go chasing those battery powered green lights that aren't really true right. for us now and tomorrow. We can chase those until we're out of gas and you're standing, you're sitting in front of the real green light. You got no gas to go. You got nothing in reserve tank. You're out of it. You know? Yeah. Don't, don't you think your point about sort of there being bright green lights and, and maybe some, some faint green lights. Like I, I was just talking to my editor on my, my first sort of book about stoicism. I was sort of asking, I was like, hey, what did you think in retrospect when I came to you, you know, wanting to write a, a book about an obscure school of ancient philosophy? They were like, well, look, we were just basically telling you yes, because we hoped you would get discouraged and then go back to your other books. Okay. And so I, that sort of, I, I love the story in the book about your first movie. Yeah, you were in the movie. Like they gave you a green light to be in the movie but you sort of took that for everything that it's worth. Like just because there's a green light doesn't mean it's good. It's going to be straight green lights from here. You might, right. you, might you know, go out as soon as you, you pass through. Yeah. And don't put it on cruise control just because you caught a green light. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep your hands on the wheel, you know, and keep driving and navigating. And, and along the way, as I was saying, keep your eye open for, as you said earlier, when do we have an, enough green lights? We're like, wait, I think this is a, this is this is a battery powered one. I need to pull off and catch a yellow here. I sure. need to take pause. I need to take a repose. I need I need a red light. Oh, I need some resistance. To stop and think, or yes. to make sure you're not heading head in the right way. direction. Yeah. Yeah, you right. know, make sure you're heading in the right direction. Oh, geez, and I, I've got a uh, I've got a great story about that uh, that didn't what included in the book, but it was coming across the 24 mile bridge of, over Lake Pontchartrain, coming back from the set of uh, uh, Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> 
It's a 24 mile bridge, longest single standing bridge, I yeah. believe, over by the way. So I think there's I a longer off. one in China. But oh, there is. But, but ah, uh, you know, since, in the U.S., okay. we, we, met, we, we claim US. whatever. Right. Well, so I get over that bridge. And as I've been driving on that bridge, I've been I've been uh, um, uh, bag and race. I hadn't had sun for, for months. I'm listening to Dylan Baggers. I get off that bridge after I get over it, pull off, go into Sonic, get a Route 44 cherry limeade, get back on the road, and I'm driving. And all of a sudden, I notice that sun's behind me now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, no. Bill, oh, I got back on the bridge going back eastbound. <laughs> Right. And I couldn't exit. I couldn't. I was going the wrong direction. Yeah, there's no um, turnarounds on that bridge. And there's no turnarounds. So I had to go a full 24 miles down and get off. And I remember just chuckling to myself, um, you know, going, okay, well, I guess you needed some sun on the back of your head. I guess you need to listen to more Dylan. And I guess you needed to enjoy the anticipation of going home to see your wife for another hour and a half. So, you know, it, it, yeah, sometimes we just go in the wrong direction and we need that. We need that red it's light. It's weird though. Light. Some of those are like my favorite moments. Like when I think of like moments that really stick in my mind of like when I was happy mm -hmm. or when life felt really good, it was some weird moment like that. It wasn't, you know, accepting the Oscar, you know, yeah. hitting number one or whatever. It's it's weirdly, it was like, oh yeah, I was drinking a soda, driving down a bridge and it, it hit me. I was going, yeah. the, the world was slow enough that I could actually be present for a second. Yes. Well, I'll I'll do you know I call it a malaprop, you know some of the malaprop some of my best moments have been in malaprops. Some of my funniest jokes, people laughed harder when they thought I said something else in the punchline than actually what I meant to say. Right. And so I'm like, none of you. And I'm I stopped myself from interrupting because I don't want to keep them from laughing because they really thought it was funny and they sure. misunderstood it. And I'm like, just go with it, go with it. Yeah, take you know? the green I mean, light. Take 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 it sometimes. You know that to bring up Penny Allen again. I told you she was my earlier mentor. She would always tell me, and this is a good one for life as well, because I love to prepare. I love to be deliberate, intentional. I love to be, come into the game solid. I'm on solid footing. And she was like, okay, you got that down, Matthew. Now, now that you got that down, here's how I want you to enter every scene. On one foot, off balance, and then find your balance in the scene. And I think that's a bit of that malaprop you're talking about. Those moments where you find yourself going the wrong way on the bridge, having your cherry soda, you have it, you're off balance again. Now you have to find your way back. That's where we're in, sure. in action. You know, that's where we're not a noun and we're actually a verb because we're having to, and, and that's what's fun to see. That's what's fun to experience is how am I going to find my footing again here? Not when sure. we're solid, when we're on solid footing, it's kind of boring sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you when atrophy, you're not growing muscle. Yeah. Hey everyone, I've, I've talked about this before, but I don't drink coffee, I don't drink soda. So when I need like a jolt of energy, I've not always had the best options, but actually right before I recorded this and right before I'm about to do the virtual talk I've got to do after this, I popped in a Neuro Mint, which are these great mints that give you energy and focus. You know, I think concentration and energy are hard at any point, but even harder during months and months of lockdowns from a pandemic. Neuromint makes these awesome functional gums and mints that help you better your mind, find the focus that's been eluding you, and do more with your day. It's got a blend of natural caffeine balanced with L-theanine infused with B vitamins and, uh, frankly, just tastes like a delicious peppermint. Each piece has got a half cup of coffee worth of caffeine in there, so it's just enough to give you a boost but not enough that you feel jittery or weird after. So I pop one of these things in before I do a phone call, before I, I jump on a talk, before I've Got to do something important, and it just gives me a nice little boost. The L-theanine is found in green tea, so it kind of balances out the caffeine so you don't get jittery. Helps uh, reduce stress, energy focus without jitters, and the gums and mints help your brain function. Just go to GetNeuro.com to order your energy and focus mints and gum. Better your state of mind. Just go to GetNeuro.com slash stoic or use promo code stoic to get 15% off all the products in their web store. That's G-E-T-N-E-U-R-O dot com slash stoic or promo code stoic to get 15% off your order. So another question on green lights, because I, I saw you had Mark Manson blur the book, who I, who I love and is a friend. He has this thing, and it's one of his more popular articles. He says sort of like, it's fuck yes or no. Basically that you either really want to do it, you have to do it, uh, 
you know, right. you would rather die than not do it, or you're going to pass on it. Right. And that's true. That's definitely, I, I, I get the logic of it, but there's also a tricky part there because I feel like some of the decisions I've made, whether it was dropping out of college or, you know, leaving my job to become an author, there were also decisions that I made that I was pretty sure I was making the wrong decision and I was terrified as I was making them. And it m was very close to being those, like, I'm so going to regret this, but it turned out to be the right thing. So how do you know? You know what I mean? How do, how do I you do, know? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I mean, uh, look, I'm, I'm a... I'm known in Hollywood as a quick no and a long yes. Um, what I'll do is if there's something I really want to do, I'm say let's call it a movie, and I really boy I like this character and I'm checked out. Who has the pedigree around it? Who's the director? They have the financing. It's, they're going to make a real movie, et cetera, et cetera. Before I'll say yes, my nose are pretty quick. Before I'll say yes, I'll go okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, Camilla. I'm doing it. Matthew, we're doing it. Here we go. We're setting sail. We're leaving in it. We're leaving in two months. Going away. That's in my mind. And everything about me with that script is now. I'm looking through the lens of that's going to be my future sure. and the man I'm going to inhabit. Now, do I wake up in the middle of the night three nights later? Ah, oh, dang it! I'm still concerned about that damn director, man. I'm not sure. I, am I trying to make? make him work, but trying to make that work or, or, or do I wake up in the middle and like, oh man, that part in the script, the second act that the writers just saying, yeah, we'll fix it on set. We'll just work with you. It's, if that doesn't work, the whole script doesn't work. Do I trust that? What's keeping me up? Then I'll go to, all right. And this is before I make any decision. Sure. I'll live a week or two weeks with that. Then I'll go, I'm not doing it. Now I'm going to go for two weeks. I'm not doing that. Get that script done. Guys, change the schedule. We're not going off to be that man. We're not doing it. Now what keeps me up at night? Does anything wake me up? If I sleep well, that's a pretty good sign that, yeah, you probably shouldn't do it because when you were going to do it, you those right. other things were waking you up. Now, if I'm waking up in the middle of the night going, ah, I got to do that guy. I got to be that man. I got, no, I, oh, no, I have to. I don't care. I, 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 we, I can work with this director and I'm going to start on the second act right now working with those writers. We're going to make this happen because I, the idea of not doing that, I'm going to feel regret it so bad. No way. I've got to do it. I have to. Well, that's a good reason to go. I'm in. But I give myself about 10 days to two weeks in each frame of mind. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. And then I measure what wakes me up at night. So a quick no and a long yes. Yeah. Interesting. So I don't want to put you on the spot and we can cut it or we can we can not make the the details of it specific. When when the the project that you and I connected about early on, we didn't know we were even in the same universe bumping up yeah. against each other on it. One of the reasons that as you were thinking about not doing it, you said you like being you. You were going to pass it you were going to pass on it right now because you like being you at this yeah. moment. I loved that answer. What the hell does that mean? Okay. So that script, I want to say, we didn't say the name of, it was a great script. And it is a great script. And well done, right? We kind of, the way you and I kind of came together is kind of really, really yeah. cool from some outside influences. Um, it was really well written and really a great read. I am having, <laughs> I am having a lot of fun being me right now. And I say that without any, you know, you print that so people go, oh, that's arrogant. No, yeah. trust me, I've had plenty of times where I don't like being me. <laughs> and right now is not one of those times, thank sure. you. Sure. The, the, the role in the life I'm living right now and have been living for the last couple of years is turning me on daily so much. I cannot wait for Monday morning. Things, family, work, creatively, the things, the, the, the choices I'm, uh, I'm in making and the, where I'm investing my time in life. I'm looking at... This whole, this, the big movie, the big movie's life. Right. And the recorder's always on. And I'm having a good time trying to challenge myself to go, be the man you want to be, be the man you are and want to be right now live 24 seven. You really want to put on the boots, McConaughey, as I'll call myself in third person, which I have no problem with that. Sure. Um, put those, put those boots on. Quit acting like one and be one. Let's go. Now I'm having a wonderful time. I'm, I get more mad now, more sad. I get more joy. I'm laughing hard. I'm feeling resonance with the thing I'm doing. I'm feeling um, a lineage with things I'm building. Um, I feel like I really have a really, really long, long view of, of, of what, where, I'm, where I'm going. 
That's what I mean. I'm having, and the book is part of this, a part of that. You know, you know, you've written. It is a singular expedition. And to go back, I had such a great time. I had the best creative time I've ever had writing this book. I laughed, I cried, I drew blood, but I had the best time I've ever had with the best company I've ever kept writing this book, me. And again, I say that freely because I've, <laughs> I've been not my favorite company sure. <laughs> plenty of times. Um, so I can speak of the asset section because I've had plenty of the debit. Um, so to idea of going, oh, I'm gonna leave my life what I'm living right now. I'm gonna leave trying to execute and be the man that, I'm, that I, that I want to be right now. I'm going to leave how much, how nervous it makes me, how anxious, how excited I get about it. I'm going to leave the idea of creating this minister of culture and what's that going to do going forward and say, I'm going to go away and do someone else's script, yours, mine, you a very, very, very good one, be directed by someone else, lensed by someone else, edited by someone else, playing someone else or another part of me that I'm not completely playing now. Well, that's a lot of filters away from my direct expression to just go do something and put it in a capsule and let that sure. live for time. I'm like, well, let, let's, let's, what about the experiment of this, our every day, every hour, every minute being part of the capsule. And if we live on hundred years, it's a hundred year capsule. If we live 80 years, it's an 80 year capsule, but all of that, let that be, we don't, your action was called when we were born. Cut is only called one time and that's when we die. So between action and cut, how are we doing in this take? This is the take. I'm like, I don't want to get out of this take. I, I love that. And it's it's always struck me how rare that is. You And I'm sure you've met many, many successful people and, and some of the most talented artists of your time. It's always striking how little autonomy and freedom some of these people have in their lives. That, Like when you look at their schedule, right? You, well, hey, do you, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, I got to go do this. And I find myself doing that all the time because it's really hard to say no. Yes, but also, you know, you and I were talking earlier and right now I'm, 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 not, I'm not, even say if we said, forget the book tour and I'm not working on a film set. I'm not on vacation. I mean, my days are full. Sure. And I'm in my office working, doing stuff. Well, I was writing this last night about we got to get to where we enjoy the enjoy more enjoy getting ready to do the work. Sure. It's like we got to get to a space where we go like, no, I know this work. I got things I got to do this afternoon that are from prior commitments. It's I'm enjoying talking about the book and going on talking to people like yourself right now. I've been doing it for three weeks and I'm enjoying that. This other thing I got to do this afternoon has nothing to do with it, but it's from a contract with another affiliation I have yeah. that helps pay my rent and one I enjoy doing. But oh, I got to get in another headspace to do that. I don't want right. to do that. But what's my alternative? Not doing it? And if I don't do it, okay, you willing to give up that contract? No, I'm not actually. So if I don't do it and try to put it off, I'm going to double up the, ne the work for the next time I got to do it. And I, trust me, on that day, I know that on that day when I do it in the future, and if I push it down the road, I'm not going to have a free day then either. So that okay. day is going to, I'm going to be like, well, I don't want to do it today, but now I got to even do twice as much as I did back then. So I'm like, get the ax out, man. Just take another swing at the tree. Just keep on working, keep on swinging the ax. And if the work that I'm doing is feeding me in the long run and, 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 and being true to me, then I'm, then that's the kind of hard work that I think we need to lean in to go, I'm going to find a way to enjoy this. If I'm going to do it, do it pleasure. We, this happens all the time with people in my industry. You go to a talk show, they don't like to impress. Oh, I can't be, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, well, don't. I mean, go, go just don't. I mean, I'm not being facetious. Seriously, right. just go home. And like, well, no, I mean, I can't, I'm going, okay. The inevitable thing is that you're saying you're doing the press. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I mean, I got to do it. Okay, so now that we're here, what the fuck, dude? Let's let's do this. I mean, what's the let's have a better time doing something you don't want to do than a shitty time doing something you don't want to do if you're going to do it. Well, I think that's the balance, right? It's like you say you say no to all. And Marx really says this. He goes, you got to ask yourself every minute. Is this essential? Is the thing I'm doing essential? And right. the upshot of that question is a lot of the things you're doing are not essential. And therefore, you don't need to do them. Right. Because the double benefit is that you do the fewer things better. And I think Heard. that's that's where you want to get, is you say Heard. no to most things, and then the things you say yes to, you either actually like doing them, or you don't like doing right. them, but you do them like they matter. Right. Look, I've had to, you know, I'm, I'm a great over-leverager. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put me in. I'll, I'll, I got a great work ethic. I, I'm like, I'll. I, what I have to watch is taking on too much stuff. Yes, me too. because I'm like, I can do it. I can do it. 
You don't have that? Give it to me. I'll take care of it. Yep. Come on. I'll line it up. And I'm good at it. I've got resilience. I've got endurance. I'll outlast a lot of people and outwork them. I did have a time though, probably 15, right around that time where I took off the rom-coms and decided to take two years off, where my phone rang. I had a production company. I had a music label. I was an actor. I had a foundation. I was a family man. My phone rang. And as I went to pick it up, I saw it was a number from my office where I have five, six employees, and I pay the rent in a beautiful office. As I went to pick up the phone, my hand paused mid-reach. I didn't want to pick up the phone. And in and, and one second, I went, what is that? <laughs> Why did your hand just, what? And I, and I backed my hand off and I let it ring. And I remember telling myself in my mind, I was like, why would your hand pause to pick up the phone from people that you pay salaries to who you like in an office that you pay it for your production company? I let the phone quit ringing. As soon as it quit ringing, I picked it up, called my lawyer. I said, shut down the production company, shut down the music label. I'm making B's in five things. I want to make A's in three things. I want to be an actor for hire, have a foundation, be a family man. Boom. And that was a great decision. I cleared two things off my desk. It was hard to do. Those people, there were five people that relied, were making a living off the salary I was paying them. Um, so I gave them fair severance, but it was, I needed to do that for myself. And I did feel like I did start making much better grades, so to speak, in those sure. three things than in, I was making when I had five. And this is a constant recalibration and calibration because what we value changes over time, you know? I mean, I have a few, you know, it's nice to have a few non-negotiable ones that I put up top that you go, no matter how confused you are, McConaughey, this is always of the greatest import. Uh, family. Sure. That's up there. Just put just put that up there and go, nothing needs to ever take that. If you always go to that, you can't lose. I mean, sometimes you just go, <laughs> you can't be in the debit if you just invest in that. The other thing is, you know, needs and wants. Jeez, man. I mean, what's really necessary? I'm in a position where I don't have to work today to pay my rent tomorrow. I only have one home. I don't have two, but still, it's a big, nice home. There's a couple rooms that no one sleeps in. Right. I don't need, I don't need that big of a house. I don't need it. There's questions of like, why don't, well, if you really want to break it down, Get rid of all of it and go get, uh, you know, and, and go get a three bedroom house. And the kids sleep in one room and mom Mac sleeps in another and you and Camilla sleep in the, the other one and you pay the rent and they're out of the house and that's it. And I would be just as happy, I know, once that decision was made to do that and cut away all the fluff, cut away a lot of the employees and, you know, housekeepers and stuff and go, but, you know, I don't know. So, so I'm not as, I'm not near as lean as I could be for sure. You know? No, I, I, and that's might be a, a, a nice place to wrap up too. I was thinking about that in the book when you were talking about living in in your uh, in your airstream. We we bought a we bought an RV in the middle of the pandemic. We're like, all right, we're not getting on an airplane in a while. If we want to go anywhere, you're gonna have to do this old school. And we bought like a little RV with yeah. you know, bunks in the back and and whatever. And, and I remember sitting the first time we took it out, we were in maybe it was Marfa, maybe it was in Las Cruces. We were on our way to California. And I'm sitting in an RV park, you know, that costs 30 bucks a night, sitting in a camp chair that costs 20 bucks, you know, cooking hot dogs in a microwave. And it was like, man, this is nice. This is really nice. And you're like, it's oh, high this living. Is, this is all it, this is, when you have that sense of a baseline, it then allows you to turn down a big check or say yeah. no, or cut yeah. stuff down. Cause you know how little is actually needed to, yeah. for, for you to be happy. Yes. And you and I've talked about this offline today now with 5G all over the world. That's more of a real a reality now. Sure. Go live where you want in small place, wherever you want. You can be wherever you want in the world. We're seeing that works right now with what we're doing, remotely talking. Right. And how much is that the new future? Uh, probably quite a bit or more than some people expect. Yeah. The, the, the good news is that means a lot of people we know are going to move near us in Austin. And then the bad news is they're all going to be in Austin and it's harder. <laughs> what I love about Austin is it makes it so I'm, I'm okay at saying no, but I'm really good at saying no to things that are happening in cities I don't live in. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, yes. Uh, it, it was harder for me to say no when I lived in New York City or when I lived in LA, because it did seem like I should go to that dinner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it, it, back to that original thing we talked about, how can you make your own choice for what's true for you in the middle of it? Yes. I mean, because you could, because that can be overdone too. People can go and think it's all about looking at the world in contrast. 
as well. And it's not true. And it's, when we're truly doing that, it's not. We're actually more part of the world and more part of the rhythms of what goes on outside our windows when we are at, at, at making our true choices for ourselves. But sometimes, yeah, um, you know, we look up and we feel like, oh, being the individual means I'm putting a hand up and, 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 right. and removing myself from the rhythms of society or the expectations. Because why am I going to the dinner? Because, I mean, that's what they're doing and it's a dinner and I'll go have a good time. Maybe you go have a great time. Maybe you meet somebody great. Sure. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe but I think, don't you think part of it is just if you can be aware of it though and go, sure. I don't have to go to this dinner. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to go. Why are you going to go? Is there a real reason why you got to go? Not really. But I want to go check it out. I'm curious. That could be a good enough reason. Sure. You know, I mean, I know, you know, that's a constant art of the, of, of the balance there. And then you just see, what comes back, what residuals come back from our choices. And if we make choices that, that, that give us more consistent residuals. Well, um, I'll give you, I'll give you one more Mark. The best place. I'll give you one more Marcus quote that I think helps me on those things. He says, are you afraid of death because you won't be able to do insert the blank anymore? So you go like, cause nobody wants to die, yeah. right? We want to live forever. And you go, am I afraid of death? because I won't be able to do this thing that I'm doing anymore. And you're like, no, I don't No, I, that's not it. And then you're like, well, you probably shouldn't be doing that thing, but oh, really? friends, spending time with family, et cetera. That is why I don't want to die. So that's a good sign of that. It's a good use of your time. Cause you're spent. That's the hard thing for us to realize is that we are, we are purchasing these things with our life. So yes, they're offering you, you know, $14 million to be in this rom-com, but you are paying them six months of your life you, living yes. in Vancouver, yeah. uh, away from your family, potentially yeah. not doing creative art. And so I think about that all the time. It's like, okay, here's what you're paying me, but what am I paying you? And uh, what's more replaceable? Heard. That's a great question. Oh my God, I'm sitting here thinking right now. <laughs> I must not be doing the right thing because I can't think of anything that I'm afraid of missing after death. But then, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm not giving a straight answer because I've already relatively gone, well, when it's over, it's over and that's the time. And how'd you do it until you, got, how'd you handle the things you love doing until you get there? You know, so maybe I'm, I'm, I'm contextualizing that question already too quickly and not answering it in raw form. No, but I you told me your priorities are family and then your own work and then doing the other sexy fun stuff. So to me, those, yeah. are, the, those are the top, for me, my priority, like when I go like, what, what do I want? It's like, I want to keep writing books, not in no order, keep writing books that I'm proud of. I want to stay married and I want to be a good dad. Those are my three things. Okay. And every, okay. everything else, if it helps me do one of those things, Heard. great. And Heard. if it doesn't, probably a bad thing. Heard. That, there you go. There you go. That, th those are three great magnets and you've got them in order. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes. So I saw the letter to your dad. Yes. Um, which I really liked. Um, let's talk, you want to talk, you mind talking about the difference between the message and the messengers? Sure. From our fathers. I mean, I know when my father moved on, even immediately at the Irish wake, two days after he passed on, I heard his old friends started sharing stories that I was like, no, 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 that's not my dad. He did. I very quickly found out that the he was not living the message, yeah. all of the messages. The sure. messenger was not living out all of the messages. And I remember the first thing being like, what? You know, I felt weak. I felt vapid. Then all of a sudden I got pissed. And I, but I, what happened is I very quickly got to a place where I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's okay. You don't. He at least was passing on trying to sure. let me do a little bit better. So I need to, that doesn't mean I need to dismiss those values that he taught me that he maybe didn't live by. Right. But I got to, I got to really work on those. That's why he handed them to me. So I forgive him for that, even though he may have forgotten <laughs> those for himself. There's a weird thing about hypocrisy, right? Because there's obviously hypocrisy is bad. And I'm not saying my dad's a hypocrite. And I'm just saying like we, as a society, we get really upset when we hear someone said one thing and did another, mm -hmm. oftentimes we use what they did to invalidate what they said. But if what right. they said is right. right, then we should we should just go, oh, that's a, like, it's really hard to live up to this stuff, right? Right. Um, right? That doesn't undermine that it's worth striving for, right? So I right. think with my dad, I think a lot of people are going through this. It's like, it's not that your your parents' support of, say, some bad political leaders 
means that all the things they taught you were untrue. Right. It's it's like, no, I really believe I'm going to do more than pay lip service to these right. things. Right. That, you know, we could unpack that on a whole nother hour because on all kinds of where we are, have been and are in society now that, you know, one thing said can erase and legitimize an entire yeah. person. You know, I try to tell our kids that, you know, I forgot who told me this, but I heard it. You may know, you may know maybe a quote from somebody that you know, but if someone tells an untruth, instead of calling them a liar, or say, no, that that you you told a lie. That oh, was sure. a lie. Sure. And not throwing the whole blanket over someone's one foible. Right. And saying, oh, well, that defines all of who you are and have ever been. Therefore, you are persona non grata illegitimized going forward. Sure. No, that, that, that's definitely true. And I mean, look, that in what I write about, Seneca is the most fascinating example of this. You have this beautiful Stoic philosopher who writes some of the, the most profound, you know, philosophy writings about goodness and ethics and truth and courage. And then he he works for Nero. <laughs> You know, and and so it's this it's is he a hypocrite? Did he not mean it? Or is it actually really hard to right. live up to this stuff? And that we're all he has some line. He's like, we're all wicked people living in a wicked world. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that that's true. It's like we and, and to me, that's the that's the hardest part about the Trump thing. And it is the way that he he has managed to in fact and manipulate and uh lead people astray from their inherent goodness like there's yeah. i think there's bad people who are you know jumping on the trump bandwagon because they're bad people but i think the sad part is the good good people who are believing things that i know are contrary to their value uh, you know i've heard from quite a few different people um independently uh one my pastor and a few other people saying that they've had people come to them. Uh, and all these people are in places of sort of leadership where yeah. people come to them and, and share their, what they're, what's unsettling to them. And in three different instances in the last two weeks, these three people have said to me independently, I had a lot of people coming to me going, they're feeling lost because they jumped to the extreme. Yeah. They're feeling lost. And I understand this time of even COVID and it's been going on before this, but of non-identity and we don't know our purpose. What do you do? You want to latch on to something. Yeah. Well, you're latching on to these two e extremes that we, we could call them. I think it's fair to call them political right now for an identity, for a sense of purpose. Sure. Or for a mirror to go, oh, okay, there I am. I have something to to, 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 to understand, to, to go after. But I think there's a lot. What I'm hearing is I've heard that a lot of people are getting buyer's remorse on yes. both sides for going, oh, I, I leaped to that and now I regret it because I actually don't feel any more true to myself over here either. I didn't even know what I was for. I just came over here yelling at what I was think I was against. Yeah. Do you know? And do you know some? I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, a friend of mine, I would say he got infected, not with coronavirus, but with like some conspiratorial nonsense, you know? Yeah. And, and it's not that it's just believing something that's not true. It's that if you extrapolate out what he's saying, it's a heinous, horrible, like reckless and dangerous thing yeah. that he's saying, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people have been on guard about not getting the, the, the literal virus and they've been yeah. infected in, by the figurative virus, either the virus of fear, yeah. you know, yeah. or the virus of, you know, conspiracies or just the virus of indifference and selfishness, which, yep. you know, that that's to me almost more dangerous. I'd rather get COVID than than uh, than go, oh, a bunch of these people were going to die anyway. Like, you know what I mean? If you right, told me right. which of those is a worse uh, infection, I think the callous indifference to the death of a quarter million people is uh, much worse than right. than a respiratory illness, even if yeah. even if the latter one kills you. Yeah. Well, there you go, back to the individual and the, and the collective. I mean, we don't do anything unless it's personal. Right. And that number on cover Time Magazine that says 200,000 lives dead, well, why Time Magazine wait to write 200? Because 200 may be enough to make you go, whoa, but right. 150 wasn't enough. Right. But would 250, would 300,000 be any different reaction than 200,000? Maybe not. 
Right. Because I don't know. I'm not, I don't. I don't know them. They're not. It's not personal to me. It didn't trespass on my property. So what are those numbers? Even though in between, if I don't feel any different about two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand, but there's a hundred thousand more people that die because of it. Right. Yeah, that, it, it totally. Doesn't, you know. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's certainly you know Marcus Aurelius lived in the plague that what they call the Antonine Plague, and he had this quote. He said, um, uh, a, "A plague can take your life, but it can only harm you." if it destroys your character. And I think that's culturally mm, where we are mm. right now on both sides of the spectrum. There's just there's just a lack of character. And and to me, character is made up of compassion and competence and, you know, principles and all, all those yeah. things. It's, yeah. it's, it's rough, man. Yes, it is. What do you see? What do you where are we in five years? I'd love for this to be a, a detour, you know, aberration. And uh, I'm, I think we as a society should hopefully be at a place where we can just not pretend that this never happened, but we can give ourselves a do over. Like I'm, I'm hoping, you know, the, the, uh, the results of the election are such that people kind of wake up and this was like a bad dream or a binge or something. Right. And uh, now we're like, okay, let's, let's rebuild. A little, let's go back to where we were. Right. But I do, I do think it's made people, particularly my generation, and maybe this is the one upshot of it, is upside of it, is that people are realizing like, oh, we just can't wait for someone else to do this for us. We have to be involved. And we have to, like, I think, you know, when you look at those events at the White House and it's like everyone on both sides is like 87 years old. You're like, yeah. what? Where are the people who are my age? Right, 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 right. I've been noticing that recently too. I think we got they're both seventy seven and seventy four, the two two men running for president. Yeah. And that caught that caught me last night. I just didn't I did it just caught me. I was like, that does sound and seem old and maybe out out, out, out of touch. And right. and at what point, you know, because there is something to gaining wisdom and something sure. that they absolutely um, keeping a, a, an even keel and, and, and uh, along the way and not, like, as we've been talking about, disassociating or illegitimizing what you don't agree with and understanding that, again, both are true. This is We're living in more of a paradox. Life is much more of a paradox than a contradiction. But at the same time, you know, we can't have the youth just say, who have a tendency to go, well, I'm an expert because I say I'm one. Right. You know, <laughs> you know we can't have that sure. either. But it takes, you know, that's why that's why that's the value of hierarchy is that you you work your way up to and you get educated and you learn sure. and you and you, and you, you test your yourself um, amongst the masses and you know you don't get it all right but you you go through trial by fire and you 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 stay with it and hopefully you evolve. But yeah, what is that uh, um, that that when I saw seventy seven seventy four that did seem those seem like high numbers. For- no, and I think the the leader of the house and the leader of the senate are both. Uh, you know, almost 80. It's crazy. It's it's it can't possibly be the best. It can't possibly be the most qualified best people for what are insanely difficult, stressful, exhausting jobs. Well, what, what are the years where our most formative years where we actually become? For me, it was 15 to 25, 13 to 25. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, if, if there's certain songs in the late 80s, I hear, I'm back. It's back. Right. There's a reason, you know, they played those certain songs on cruise ships because they know exactly the age of the people on right. the cruise ship and you want to make them feel young again. So if you go back and go, what is everyone, where, what was the decade for everybody in any position of power where that was their most formative years? That, that, that's usually, I'm betting, is where they're sort of speaking from <laughs> or their opinions are coming from. Right. Um, how much do people evolve and change over that time? I'm not sure. What What were your most formative years? Where? Yeah, I think I think I think there are those years. I, so I dropped out of college when I was 20, and that's when I sort of my life changed very dramatically. Sort of like yours, where you you sort of success comes early, which is an interesting experience because it kind of changes you. But now I'm in this weird thing where I'm also thinking about like, oh man, what am I going to do for the next? 40, 50 years, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I think I think with leaders, you want a nice mix of experience, but you also want a freshness and energy. Like you look at a Kennedy or something. Kennedy yeah. was like our youngest president, but he also, you know, 
fought in a war and he'd overcome right. sickness and loss and you know he served in slightly other you know lower offices i think i think we need a mix of that what i don't think you want these people who are i mean look i, I i'm i i already voted for biden but i think 47 years of government service to then be in the head of things is probably right, right. you know it didn't work so great for lyndon johnson either you you need a kind of a you need a little bit of insider so you know how the system works and a little bit of outsider outlawness so you're right. not wedded yeah. to the system. Yeah. There, there's an African proverb about that says no man is, is in a position to to lead until until he or she has raised children through adolescence. OK, sure. That yeah, talking about formative, talking about yeah. which, which I think you have a quote here on Trump. That's when he realized the lying is pathological. It can't be helped, which is to say it makes a person unfit to lead and a lot of your letter to your dad was about dad this is that it goes directly against what you taught me growing right. up sure so it's maybe a good reminder you know of maybe that's what we need to lean into as far as what our character which is an, an a word that's come up here what do we want from our leaders sure well who's been who's been good fathers and good mothers oh that's a great point no and uh there's that there's this expression sort of character is fate I think that's the other thing is sure age matters, energy matters, experience matters. But at the end of the day, like who they are, the traits that animate them as a person are yeah. assure their destiny as a leader. And I think that's really where Trump has struggled is yeah. all, all of his flaws, you know, manifested themselves into the worst crisis now in American history. And you could say who, who could have seen this coming? But like the ancients would have said, you know, anyone could have seen this coming. It's almost Shakespearean. <laughs> right. Yeah, indeed. Uh, dude, this is so good. I can't believe this is this is a weird quirk of our time, which is that we met like six months ago and we haven't been able to actually see each other in person. And who knows when that'll happen. Right. And hey, I want to thank you for, you know, you know, when I started coming out with this book, um, you and I have mutual friend that uh, that you know. How, I, there's many other stories about how our yep. how we kind of came together here, um, but it was natural. But you also have been so open, honest, and even forthright about going, "Hey, this is your first time going out with the book. Make sure you're doing this or this or this or this." And you kind of give me a little guardrails of direction and structure through going through this. Has been really, really a help. Oh, my pleasure. No, it was uh, it was an honor. And you'll know what I mean. I don't know when this will come out, but you'll know day after tomorrow, you'll get the news. Uh, unlike unlike Hollywood, you got to wait three, four days before the, the box office receipts come in. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's no, been I think fun. It's gonna do great. Having a great time. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, Ryan. Have a good one.